Hey guys, Dennis Slitter Magic here. Sorry if you heard a little bit of extra background noise. My computer is currently under construction for upgrades. And I'm not saying it's currently running off of two power supplies because of poor planning, but if it was, one of them would be a 1200 watt HP ProLiant uh, Platinum certified with an off board running just the GPU. Which is the bad news, but uh, the good news is it's a 3080. Just picked it up for about a grand and I could sell my old card for about 800. So, uh, you know, still can't really afford it, but the 1080 Ti I had is so damn old, I just cannot afford a failure. And this card makes like 8 to 10 bucks a day mining, so, uh, you know, hey. So the good news is I should be able to stream Magic Legends a hell of a lot better now and maybe play Cyberpunk at medium. I sold off thousands of rounds of ammo to be able to afford this card, by the way, so, uh, Kind of tells you where my priorities are. I'm down to like a couple thousand rounds left over now. Oh no. Anyway, I'd rather be gaming than at the gun range because I can't afford to go to the gun range. But let's jump into the spoilers. There's some real treats at the end of this one. I kept it at the end to not ruin the beginning. Uh, we got Blex Vexing Pest. So <laughs> we've got the regular pest tokens and then this is like the king of the pests. I like that for some reason. So it's a 3-2 three, for 3 legendary creature pest. And uh, other pests, bats, insects, snakes, and spiders. You control get plus one, plus one. Nice. Okay. And uh, when he dies, you gain four life, which I believe the other ones are like one ones where when they die, you gain one life. I can't see pest tribal working, but I appreciate that this exists. <laughs> so on the backside, we've got search for blacks, of course. It is a four cost black sorcery with look at the top five cards in your library. You may put any number of them into your hand and the rest in your graveyard, but you lose three life for each card you put into your hand this way. Oh, harsh. I haven't followed modern too much or any of the deck lists or anything, but like... This still kind of strikes me as potentially a Death Shadow card. Maybe. So next up we got Infused with Vitality. Ah, it's a Silver Quill, let him die. It's a two cost instant, until end of turn, target creature gets Death Touch, nice. And when it dies, return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Now remember, you don't have to target a creature you control, and then you gain two life off this spell. So, uh, I never liked the whole, like, shady way of stealing your opponent's creature on a Resurrect and then you get their ETB too. Uh, that just seems like a little much, especially for two mana. I've seen some pretty degenerate stuff done with the cards that already do this in Standard. And everybody knows after that, uh, what was that that uh agent of treachery nobody wants any of their crap stolen ever that that is just like the biggest no-no when it comes to enjoyable gameplay but wizard still hasn't gotten that apparently so this one i mean when would you ever fool them when you have to cast this on their creature to get their creature like oh i swung with my one one death toucher and they blocked with their you know six six mythic oh looky it's mine now but i'm thinking uh, if you flashed in a death toucher and then cast this on top of it that would be something, but, you know, you'd have to have both. And then you're burning two cards just to steal one of theirs, but I don't know. Still pretty good spell. Uh, next up, we got Jadzi, Oracle of Archivos. Or, obviously, Archavios. I bet that's some kind of repository that the ancients had. You know, the, those ancient, archaic, whatever the hell, statue people that live in the forest or whatever. That, like, they had, and then the, the college is, like, searching for it because there'd be, like, mad spell books there. I mean, I could just go read the story, but I'm crunched on time again this whole damn week. So this says, uh, it's a 5-5 five, five for 8, hello, and uh, discard a card. Uh, this oracle returns to its owner's hand. All right, hard to blow this up. And then uh, Magecraft, whatever you cast a copy of spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it by paying one rather than paying its mana cost. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. I mean, for 8, like, is that really overpowered? Yes, the answer is yes, it still is. So on the back, we've got Journey to the Oracle, which this one's a real treat. So do note what two colors this is in. So you're going to get to eight. This is the land dump deck. This is going to be very problematic after release. And you know damn well I'm going to build it on Arena. But uh, it's a four cost. Or is it? Or does it cost three? Okay, I'll cover this in a future video about news and stuff. But um, there's... A digital version of this out there in the official database where the mana cost is three but it won't look that way on paper it's purely a digital problem details to come so anyway this is still toxic ass cancer right here uh you may put for four mana any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield now by the time you got four how the hell many lands could there possibly be in your hand and even if it's like two or three which seems high to me at that point you could just play them over the next couple turns like you know one two three right in a row so I don't know. If you have a way of artificially stuffing your hand, okay. Otherwise, I don't think this is that good. But still, it's like, it's a giant multi-dump for lands. And, and it only costs four. So it just feels overpowered and wrong. We'll have to see how it really turns out. But anyway, it says, then if you control eight or more lands, which, uh, yeah, you probably do, you may discard a card if you do return Journey to the Oracle to its owner's hand. Well, 
well, then you're out of lands in your hand. So, I mean, unless you're using, like, one of those blue spells to draw, like, seven cards or something, in which case you're probably just better off playing Mill with Teferi's, uh, what is it, Insight or whatever. Yeah, I don't really get it. There's got to be something with this card, like something that they intended and that they tested, and that's what I'm worried about. But on the surface, it doesn't seem that good while also potentially being a problematic, overpowered card. So no matter how you look at it, it's bad. They just shouldn't have printed this. And on the other side, it's terrible. Just dumb. Just why do you got to print stuff like that, wizard? So next up, Leech Fanatic. Yeah, she looks like somebody would be way too into leeches. And my chemical romance. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. As long as it's your turn, Leech Fanatic has lifelink. All right, I mean, that's decent. Still more of a draft card, but decent. Uh, next up, Pigment Storm. I blame Silver Quill. I don't know, actually, it could be those Art Major kids from the, what is that, blue, red? Anyway, uh, it's a 5 cost. It deals 5 damage to target creature. That's some hazardous pigments. <laughs> Good luck cleaning up after that one. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. Damn, overflow, spell trample. I kind of like that. People received that pretty well after it was in <laughs> an unset of all things. That's where it started. And then they're like, oh, people like it. And they made it a real thing. And people are like, yeah, I like it. So it's five for five. It's sorcery. It ain't that great, but you know, whatever. Next up, Pillar Drop Rescuer. It's a uh, five cost, two, two spirit cleric with flying. And when it enters the battlefield, return target creature card with mana fellow three or less from your graveyard to your hand. Not worth five, though. Not in standard. Uh, next up, Plum the Forbidden. Uh, it's a two cost instant. Apparently, Wizards is back talking about plumbing for some reason because that went so well the last time they did it <laughs> in the War of the Spark book. And uh, as an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice one or more creatures when you do copy this spell for each creature sacrificed this way. You draw a card and lose one life. So it's kind of like Strive almost. Or like, uh, not really Overload. Um, oh, Multi-Kicker. Definitely closest to Multi-Kicker. So I'm kind of glad they brought that back. I like the pay more, get more thing. It's kind of like a risk and reward too. I mean, if you got a bunch of creatures you're just going to resurrect anyway with Luris, that's problematic. But yeah, Luris is the problem, not this spell. And I'm actually kind of afraid of that. I I'm very, very much afraid of, of this going in that deck for two mana. So yeah, that indestructible dog and the, the Eidolon that gives pro colors and then you just keep looping them over and over and over and then run this on top of it. Oh man, would that be bad? But you would lose your protection on Luris by killing it this way. So I don't know, maybe not, but this is uh it's a good spell. It's just ruined by a bad deck. And that's going to be a lot of things in Strixhaven, unfortunately. So next up, Professor's Warning. I bet she's warning them that Battle Bond 2 is coming out eventually. Uh, so one cost instant, choose one, put a 1-1 counter on target creature, or it gains indestructible till end of turn. So a ambush boost or a saver. I think we already have one of these, actually. Kind of neat. I like the option, especially for one. It's decent. Uh, next up, Sedgemoor Witch. It's a 3 cost, 3-2 three, human warlock with uh, menace. It has ward pay 3 life. Now that's interesting. That's such a black thing, too. That's like black hexproof or blexproof. But then it also has Magecraft. Uh, if you trigger it, uh, create a 1-1 black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. So you have a little bit of way of getting life back. But it's like, why would you want to do ward pay three life just to get the token flood? This isn't that good of a creature, but I mean, 3-2 menace, okay. It's far from useless in combat, that's for sure. Next up, the Karaks are back, which is really just a crocodile. I mean, it even says it on the type line. But uh, this here is a vanilla 2443. How exciting. Next up, Unwilling Ingredient. Nice. It's a one cost frog uh, with menace, one one. Great. And if you pay three exile uh, this from your graveyard, you draw a card and lose one life. Oh, but only after it's dead. That's kind of interesting. I kind of like that. Makes it a lot better turn one. Uh, next up, Witherbloom Pledge Mage. It's a uh, five cost double hybrid, five five tree lock war or tree tree folk warlock, whatever. Uh, the Magecraft, you gain one life. Not vaguely worth it by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, draft card once again. Next up, Lash of Malice. Nah, them prissy silver quill boys got every single eyelash on point. There ain't no malicious lashes on those beautiful faces. Anyway, one cost instant, target creature gets plus two, minus two until end of turn. So you can kill something, you can boost something, you can do both. I like it. Next up, we've got Mokila de Conjuros, also known as Spell Backpack. It's two cost artifact. Uh, the translation on the site I'm looking at is already wrong, so I'm just gonna wing it. Makes me wonder how many of the like Korean and Japanese ones are wrong, and I just have no way of knowing. But anyway, uh, whenever you cast this, you know, instant or sorcery, um, put some kind of counter, I guess a book counter on uh, this card. And then if you tap it, remove a book counter. I wonder if it's really book. I feel like it wouldn't be in English, but we'll go with it. 
Uh, and then you add one colorless mana to your mana pool. Okay, cool. And then if you pay three, you can remove three book counters from this card and rob a card. Or an English draw a card. I just love that. I'm going to rob a card from my library. Next up, a bit of an odd card here with kind of creepy looking artwork there. But it's uh, Estudo de Vespera, which basically translates to like cram study they claim i'm not familiar with the term so it's like you know urgent studying or like cramming for the test you know something something in that neighborhood uh and it just gains four life which how does that have to do with like harming your health by staying up all night to cram for a test it should be the opposite you should like lose life and then gain like draw a card or like do something with spell knowledge it just it doesn't make sense but on the bottom there it has learn so i mean i guess that vaguely fits so the next up tangle trap uh venus flytrap capable of eating an airplane apparently that's that's a big boy uh it's a two cost instant tangle trap deals five damage to target creature with flying yeah that'll take down an airplane or destroy target artifact i don't know we've seen better versions i think like return to earth was better um i don't know whatever it still costs two though it's it's better than plummet so like whatever uh next up we got twins twin scroll shaman uh three cost one two with double strike so uh big uh, equipment and boost target there i feel like in the rush boost deck three might be a little high but i mean it's permanent double strike so hey i'm building that deck the white red boost deck definitely day one i'm building that and the uh the ramp deck so uh yeah we'll see if it works i'll sneak two in why not uh next up mage hunter's onslaught aka the battle for hogwarts it is actually a story spotlight card if you look on the bottom there uh it's a four cost black sorcery even though it's a story spotlight and it's very significant they made it a common <laughs> destroy target creature or planeswalker and then whatever a creature blocks this turn its controller loses one life well, that's kind of neat i'm kind of impressed with the stuff that i've personally never seen before in the game that they just came up with for spells on this set it, it's pretty wild next up ritual de eliminacion once again i said that's so american trying to rush it Elimination. Gotta get them vowels right. Anyway, destroy every permanent. Hello. With, oh, that isn't a land. With, oh, mana value. That's a new term. Of two or less. And then aggregate. <laughs> so gain. Uh, one black or one green mana for every permanent destroyed in this manner. Damn, you could do some damage with this thing. Holy crap. And then you want to talk about like, almost kind of a board wipe and then you coming back from it the fastest yeah gaining like five mana to do it and uh it's any permanent it doesn't say anything about tokens so i mean you take out somebody's scoot swarms you know 12 of those gain 12 mana and just cast the rest of your hand and they got nothing left damn i mean the thing is though those two colors aren't really known for their oh my giant creatures that'll cost three and up but i mean you could do it i mean green is part of the cost I think the theory is you would kill your own pest creatures that were kind of holding it down until the biggies can come out. You gain a ton of life for them dying, you gain a bunch of mana, and then you proceed to drop the bombs after hopefully taking out something your opponent owns too. So, decent. Next up, Mortality Spear. Uh, this spell costs two less to cast if you gain life this turn, so bring it right down to two and then destroy target non-land permanent. Nice. A lot of uh, direct removal in two colors in this set. Next up, Spring Main Servant. It's a uh, three cost, three two elk. Wonderful. I had to throw that in, didn't you? And clearly in the artwork, that is not an elk. Uh, when Spring Main Servant enters the battlefield, you gain two life and lose faith in the future of this game. Next up, Reckless Amplomancer, aka Massive Basehead. Uh, it's a two cost, two two. And if you pay five, it's uh, you double Reckless uh, Amplomancer's power and toughness till end of turn because Mark Rosewater. So. A card that can boost itself, that you can throw it on early and dump counters on. We've already got counter doubling. We've already got power doubling and redoubling. And then they have a built-in automatic doubling. It's only until end of turn, but still, th this is ridiculous. At least it doesn't have trample and it takes a bit to set up. But I hate the concept of this. I hate the fact that this exists. Next up, Mage Duel. It's a three-cost sorcery. This spell costs two less to cast if you've cast another instant of sorcery spell this turn. Nice. And target creature you control gets plus one, plus two till end of turn, but at sorcery speed. Then it fights target creature you don't control. Okay. I mean, if you want to waste the boost and then also removal and then try to swing, but that's an awful lot of cards and an awful long setup, so uh, I don't know. Next up, not sure if it's reject or reject, just like I'm not sure why English doesn't have accent marks, but uh, it's a two cost instant in blue, counter target creature or planeswalker spell, unless it's controller pays three, which commonly they will. Uh, if that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. So just an unreliable essence scatter that also includes planeswalkers, totally and utterly not worth it. 
Decent sideboard card, maybe, but uh, sideboards are now your extra deck, so uh, I guess not. Uh, next up, Brackish Trudge. It's a 4-2 uh, for 3. Very nice. That's always appreciated. Fungus Beast, nice. Uh, Nitro's Battlefield tapped. Okay, and then if you pay 2, return it from your graveyard to hand. Activate this only if you gain life this turn. I hate creatures that keep coming back, but, I mean, if you do a pest deck, you could keep gaining life reliably, so, uh, I don't know. I mean, this could get annoying. Next up, 10 the pests. Well... He's going to grow up to be a serial killer or shoot up the school or something. Uh, it's a two-cost instant as an additional cost to cast a spell sacrifice a creature. Uh, create X, 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature tokens with when this creature dies, you gain one life, where X is the sacrifice creature's power. Oh, you could do some damage with this spell. If they're running too much removal, especially if they have a removal spell on the stack, cast this for two at instant speed, save your creature, and instead of going tall, go wide. Very, very wise adaptation to a uh, control deck. Definitely. Or a point removal deck, I should say. Next up, Tempted by the Auric. It's a uh, triple blue four-cost sorcery. Hello. For each opponent, gain control of up to uh, one target creature or planeswalker that player controls with mana value three or less. Well, f*** you too. Stealing other people's permanents for anything less than like nine mana should not be allowed. It's too annoying, the players hate it, everybody just universally reviles it. I don't care that they made this basically mono blue only by making it triple blue, it doesn't matter. This card is garbage. It's like, what the hell worth value are you going to steal? It doesn't matter. I probably needed it, and you're an asshole for playing this. And you're probably going to clone it, because this set. So next up we got Scurrid Colony. It's a 2-cost uh, 2-2 two 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 squirrel reach. Uh, when it, or it, it gets plus 2 plus 2 as long as you control 8 or more lands. Still not good enough in a ramp deck and a land drop dra deck to be a, a two drop. It doesn't do anything in the meantime. Now, if it was a zero four, that'd be a different story. Next up, we got Belladros Witherbloom. Oh boy, what are the Elder Dragons? So it's a seven cost four four with flying, and at the beginning of each upkeep, create a one one black and green pest creature token. We know what they do. And then pay 10 life, untap all lands you control, activate this only once each turn. Glad they had the second line. Honestly, for seven, I don't think this is that good, but it has its very specific interactions where it would be amazing. Hey guys, guys, remember Wilderness Reclamation where you could just like do this, but without an Elder Dragon and for like one third the mana? Yeah, that was kind of broken. Oh, and without paying the, the life and more than once each turn because it wasn't legendary. Yeah, that card was a mistake. But every day that they don't fire Mark Rosewater, they make the same damn mistake. Uh, next up, we got Poet's Quill. Oh no, so now we get the theater kids and now we got the poetry kids. Come on, and they're all emo. Nobody wants to read emo poetry. Here, let me give you a sample of some quality emo silver quill poetry. It's fun to pretend that my eyes have lasers. I'm so dark. Your mace won't work and neither will your tasers. I'm so emo. So anyway, uh, it's a two-cost black artifact equipment. Nice. And uh, when it enters battlefield, learn. Okay. Equipped creature has uh, gets plus one, plus one in his lifelink. Nice. And finally, it's not colorless. And equipped two. That's decent. I'm actually kind of mad that this isn't an uncommon because this would just wreck in a draft. Man, that's a smoking good card that finally they made it an appropriate color alignment. Uh, next up, Callous Blood Mage. But if you put your ear right up to the artwork, you can just hear the I'm so emo. Anyway, Vampy Boy here is a uh, 3 cost 2 1 Vampire Warlock. When it enters the battlefield, choose 1, create a 1 1 pest, or uh, you draw a card and lose one life, or exile target player's graveyard. That's definitely utility, but then you're stuck with a do nothing off tribal piece of crap. I guess maybe Warlock tribal. We haven't really seen uh, anything that would indicate that. So next up, we got Zephyr Boots. Oh boy, you can win some Quidditch with that. Uh, 1 cost artifact equipment. Equipped creature has flying. That's cheating. And uh, whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Wow. Oh, and then discard a card. I was going to say, otherwise this, this just crushes Rogue's Gauntlets in an unfair way. And then equip two. So, uh, all right. Well, I get to do draw before you discard, at least. I like the uh, the other, the wing kit or whatever, that's better. Uh, next up, Excavated Wall. It's a one cost, zero, four. Nice. Uh, defender, tap, or pay one, tap it, mill a card. Yeah, I gotta get all that spirit crap going, but we all know that that, that red-white's gonna be dead on arrival. Like, the whole damn college costs like five mana on up, and it, it's just garbage spirits on the ground that don't fly, which is you know, really what on the ground means. Next up, Dina, Soul Steeper. It's a two cost, one, three. Uh, legendary creature Dryad Druid, how they would employ somebody who drinks souls. I don't know why the hell do either of these colleges even exist. I hope they both burn down or get killed by the uh, Kinoa Witch Hunters or whatever. I don't remember what the hell they're called. 
So anyway, uh, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Oh, a double pinger. That's nice. Or ping amplifier, I guess this would be, not a double. Okay, uh, then if you pay one, sack another creature. Dina, Soul's Deeper, gets plus X plus O till end of turn where X is a sacrifice creature's power. And pretty good if they're targeting it with a removal spell, I guess. Otherwise, you know, not that great. Next up, Harness Infinity. Hello. Triple green, triple black, plus one, because they just had to tack on that extra one. Uh, instant Mythic. Exchange your hand in graveyard. And then exile Harness Infinity. That's like the 10th spell to say exile because they know there's so much spell recursion and cloning and, and all this other bullshit with the graveyard that they have to like exile anything vaguely broken. Why not just get rid of the graveyard spell recursion? Nobody liked flashback. It was freaking annoying. So anyway, yeah, this is wild for seven. I mean, just nuts. It'd be so late game, and then you'd have to discard a bunch of them, which is going to be a pain in the ass online, and, like, it, it's just weird. Then you trigger Magecraft with this, I guess, and... This just screams that it would do something horribly broken outside of standard. I don't know what. I don't know what deck. Probably something to do with Dredge or something. I don't know. Something somewhere would use this, and it would be bad, I assume. And in standard, this... Like, a, oh, maybe this might kind of benefit me in some way eventually. That's not good enough to, to make the cut in any deck that I build. I don't know about you guys. So next up, Witherbloom Campus, another pay for Skyland, no surprise there. And then we've got Professor of Zoomancy. Oh, he's mixed it up some chemicals to go to war with uh, Goldilocks. So it's a four cost, four, three bear druid. And when Professor of Zoomancy enters the battlefield, create a one, one black and green pest creature token with, you know what it does, you know, when it dies, game on life. That's uh, not terrible, but for four in green, you could do way better. Uh, next up, Hunt for Specimens. It's a two cost sorcery. Create a one, one black and green pest creature token and then learn. Okay, so that is what it is. Next up, oh, got another four in one. This is a deadly draught, as in like potion or so. I don't know what the exact definition is, but like drink. Uh, so it's a two cost sorcery. Each player sacrifices a creature or <laughs> planeswalker is what that should say. Boy, these translations are on point. Uh, if you sacrifice a permanent this way, you may return another permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Only to your hand. I mean, I guess, yeah, get rid of a pest and then go get, like, something amazing, I guess. But the whole pest archetype, the throwaway token, the I don't care if it dies, I'm going to gain life anyway, it just seems like such a slow, gradual, susceptible to control deck. It, it just doesn't look good. So, I mean, this card looks pretty good, but, like, that archetype I don't think will take off. Could be wrong, who knows. Next up, Honor Troll. Get it? Like, Honor Roll, because this is literally an unset. Uh, three cost, two, three troll druid, vigilance, if you would gain life, you instead gain that much plus one. How the hell this isn't a white card, I have no idea. And honor troll gets, okay, how the hell is this not a white card? What the hell is this? Plus two, plus one, as long as you have 25 or more life. First of all, the number is 27. Secondly, you're in the wrong color. Third, f*** this card. I'm gonna take this stupid troll and feed him color pie until he pukes. Maybe then he'll respect the color pie. Next up. Quite possibly the most broken card in the set, Dagamoth, or Day, Day Mag who gives a shit, Titan. It's quad hybrid, it's an 11-10, you heard that right. Whenever it attacks or blocks, sacrifice a creature. Okay, so the entire pest deck is back up and running, and this is what you put in it. Good luck, still a garbage deck, he has no evasion. At least they didn't give him trample, but yeah, I mean, you could chump this forever. He's not going to take long to get out, I'll tell you that. But, I mean, when they did that stupid Gigantosaurus 10-10 for 5, everybody hated that piece of shit, too. And if you didn't have a blocker, it was egregiously overpowered. And if you did have blockers, it did absolutely nothing. It was just a terribly designed card that everybody hated. Well, here's this. Even worse. You're putting all your eggs in one basket, and in one of the most heaviest creature removal metas I've ever seen in my life, you're going to try and play this shit with no hexproof or evasion in any way. Good luck. That said, am I going to write off this card as garbage? No, this is insane. And especially in a draft, this would just be like automatic game winner. It's just bullshit. I mean, it could be stopped by a 1-1 one -one death toucher for one. Okay, cool. But like this card should not exist. And then we've got uh, Professor Onyx, aka Liliana on the flavor text, basically calling Mark Rosewater a demon. That's my take on it. I mean, he's probably the one who created this card, just saying. Uh, next up, Containment Breach. It's a three-cost sorcery lesson. Oh, here we go. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's not something you want in a Swiss Army sideboard. Uh, if its mana value is two or less, create a 1-1 one -one pest with... I mean, yeah, we know. So if you don't feel like mainboarding a naturalize, you could just throw this in there. But then you'd, on, in, in the middle of your deck, also have to have Learn. And thank God, Learn doesn't look worth it, except for in the uh, uh, blue-green 
mana ramp one because of the colorless mana fetch and then like the green mana fetch both of which are lessons both of which you can kind of like stack on top of your deck and then like over uh stuff the number of lands but then thin it with cards that are outside your deck and you, you start getting all these weird mathematical like mathematically anomalous things happening i hate it i hate everything about it it violates how the game works at a basic level and it's it's garbage and they need to stop with this crap Next up, Overgrown Arch, 2 cost, 0, 4, Plant Wall, Defender, Tap, you gain 1 life, nice. And then you can pay 2, Sacrifice Overgrown Arch, and Learn. That's kind of neat. I mean, as far as Learn cards goes, this is one of the better time-stalling ones for sure. Uh, next up, Pillar Drop Warden. It's a 4 cost, 1, 5, Spirit Dwarf with Reach. And if you pay 2 and tap it, Sacrifice it, Return Target Instant or Sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, activate this only as a Sorcery. Not a very good card. Next up, Orik Warlock. Uh-oh, they've got their own magic users. So uh, he's a four-cost creature human warlock, of course. Human, that's actually surprising. And uh, you tap him, search your library for a card, put it in your graveyard, then shuffle your library. If it's an instant sorcery card, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Orik Warlock. So you go get preferably a sorcery or instant, stuff it directly into your graveyard from your library, and all of that just to get a counter. And he starts as a 3-3 three, three for 4. That is just unusual. Next up, we finally have a spell called Fail. They only missed the Fail trend on the internet by like 17 years. So anyway, Fail here is a uh, 2 cost uh, black instant. Target creature gains negative X, negative X until end of turn, where X is 7 minus the number of cards in its controller's hand. Oh, it's like a miniature version of that one uh, black creature that I put in my uh, black deck. So the shorter they are on spells, the more negative it does, which would, in theory, be later games, so you could blow up something bigger. So yeah, this is a fantastic card. Next off, a Damagoth? I thought it was spelled differently. Nah, eh, who knows. Uh, the Woe Eater. Okay, it's got that funny four-cost mana cost with a hybrid in the middle, creature demon. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. And it's a 7-6, by the way. Hello. Uh, then whenever you sacrifice a Dame Goth, maybe a Woe Eater, maybe, each opponent discards a card and you draw a card and gain two life. So if or when he eventually self-destructs, you get two life and a card out of it, and they have to discard one. So nasty, nasty card here. Very annoying and deeply overpowered as a 7-6 for 4. These, uh, you know, giant broken creatures with monstrous stats, but then a giant downside, are going to be just horribly enabled in other formats, like Commander and Modern. Where you can just cast like, oh, 1 plus X, summon X tokens. Okay, cool, now I'm good for the rest of the game. Well, now I'm swinging with a 7-6 on turn 4. I mean, really? Hopefully they don't take off too much in standard, but yeah, this and the other one should not exist. And if I recall, they're in the same colors. Wonderful. Next up, we got a DFC. Oh boy, Pestilent Cauldron Artifact. Uh, tap it, discard a card, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token. Uh, pay one and tap it. Each opponent mills X cards, where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. That's weird. And then pay four, exile four cards from a graveyard, and uh, draw a card. So just a weird black utility artifact, okay? And then on the other side, we've got Restorative Burst. It's a sorcery. Uh, return, uh, cost five. Return up to two target creature, land, or planeswalker cards from your graveyard to your hand. Nice, so like Fetcher is like Evolving Wilds, nice. And then each player gains four life. Why the hell would it be each creature, or each player? That's odd. And then Exile, Restorative Burst. Just keep throwing Exile on everything when you know the Graveyard Recursion is toxic. Yep, that's the solution. Yes, you've definitely identified and fixed the problem with the whole Graveyard Recursion thing by putting Exile on like 11 spells. Good job, Wizards, you totally nailed it. It's not the Graveyard Recursion that's broken. It's every single spell in it that's broken. Let's make sure half the spells in the damn set don't go to the graveyard. There we go. Solution. Stable mechanic. Yay. So that card's a dumpster fire. Next up, we got Blood Researcher. It's a three-cost vampire druid with menace. And whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 counter on a Johnny's Pride Mate. Oh, sorry. I meant Blood Researcher. Oh, good. A Johnny's Pride Mate is back. That's what we needed. Next up, we've got Il Biblioplex, which is, of course, Italian for the Biblioplex. At least that's what the translation is. I thought they threw the O in and even in the American version, but whatever. It's all Latin anyway. So uh, it's a land. It comes in untapped. You can tap for color. It's cool. Then you can pay two, tap it. Look at the top card of your library. If it is an instant or sorcery card, which is not real likely, you may reveal it and add it to your hand. If you don't, you may put it into your graveyard. Activate this ability only if you have exactly seven 
or zero cards in hand. That is so weirdly narrow. For some reason, there is only one Biblioplex, and, and this still isn't legendary, which that makes no sense. And it's a rare land, and it's complete garbage. What were they even thinking with this? Like, this is just terrible. Well, moving on, we've got Big Play. It's a uh, two-cost instant target creature gains plus two, plus two, and reach until end of turn, and then put a one-one counter on it, which is really outrageously powerful as a two-cost instant. I mean, that is just, like... A plus three, plus three for two at instant speed in the common slot. If you don't draft this, you're out of your damn mind, first of all. And you get to keep one third of the boost permanently. I mean, for two mana as a common, really? I mean, I get it. We have, I think, a two cost plus four, plus four. But this is just like, when when you're playing in, a, in any kind of limited, so draft or sealed, when it's like biggest creature wins or I can outswing all your creatures so I'm swinging and I'm going to win because of it, have fun jumping and top blocking or top decking. Um, yeah, a plus one, plus one counter is like, really important so this plus like an ambush removal it's basically removal that makes your creatures bigger for two in green i mean i can't state it any clearer than that this is going to be devastating to the draft environment next up something in italian let's see it's uh devouring tentacles i sure it's not devouring and then some some name of some pasta and they just got confused and translated it to tentacles i mean it is italian anyway it's a two cost sorcery target creature you control deals damage equal to its power Two target creature or planeswalker you don't control so a force fight without the fight for two that's what we needed another one of those i am just sick to my ass of of ram through F hate that card but guess what when the permanent you don't control dies this turn you gain two life they had to make it even worse and finally la tro del bayou that's, of course, Bayou Bandit. It's a two-cost dog plant, and uh, it's a 5-4, because of course it is, and as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice some piece of crap that you don't care about, or pay three. So a third, monstrously too large for its mana cost creature. So you throw those three into a pest deck, and you might actually have something, because that you might actually win with. Still strikes me as weak and slow, but... If you get just the right combination, you can hold off just enough, and I guess if your opponent's playing absolutely no removal at all, you could conceivably win with those stupid overpowered creatures, which should never happen. They should have been printed. But also, the deck looks really weak, so it's like, it's just a failure all around. Everything about that is just a disaster. And this is like a one and done. You've got a 5-4 on turn two if you threw out a shitty 1-1. One, one. You shouldn't have that. I mean, think of Steel Leaf Champion. You should not have that. That should not happen. A 5-4 is too powerful for turn two. I know. Controversial opinion here. Man, this set is pushed. Wizards is losing their damn minds. Seriously. So anyway, that's it for today. Uh, or yesterday or whatever the hell. I'm so late on these damn things. But thank God we've only got nine spoilers today, I, I think. So I'm going to go cover those in a separate video and then hopefully get some damn sleep. I'll see you guys next video.